years, I endured the endless cycle I had once called living, stumbling blindly through the ever so dark and distorted corridors of my own shameful existence, searching for some kind of light, a beacon of hope to break me out of these shackles and plunge me into the arms of someone who cared, someone who loved. Love. Love that allows us to be capable of everything and anything. You see, I hadn't studied all week. To be frank, I barely studied in diligence or due intelligence throughout the whole year. So when the time came for the exam, it was seen that my professor was trying to get revenge. God, the structure of my house, my foundation, when built, will not be moved. God is the serenity of peace. Even when the tornadoes of confusion surrounds us, he soothes. The foreign substances launch themselves tumultuously into my system. The odd caution flowed, storing itself in different places that used to be my body, his temple. Who placed the mountains on their thrones? Who painted the sky in blue? And what about the careful arrangement of our bones? Can anybody tell me who told us what's true? Despair, confusion, and hate crept through me once more. The odd concoction flowed through me and soon disguised itself as euphoria. The disgusting feeling of filth and disappointment still lingered on the skin I had previously pierced. Was this love? Was this God? I know everything. So call me Mr. Omniscience. Go ahead, call it arrogance. I'll shrug it off without hesitancy. It's not my fault that I'm recipient of such informational inheritance. Honestly, it's not because of my genetic fingerprints that the hands of my intelligence have a grasp upon everything's definition. No, this too can be your experience. You and I, I and you, there is no difference. See, for available to all is this same omniscience for we have been endowed through our existence to know God in all of the depths of his dimensions and did I mention that you too can know everything because everything knows you by pronunciation ladies and gentlemen can I have your attention and not just your attendance I know everything because everything knows me down to my very intentions Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you everything. God is my everything. My God is the vine dresser, and I am the vine. I am the water he wants to turn into wine. If my branch won't bear fruit, he's quick to intervene, removing dirt and dead leaves. He makes my branch clean. And you see, God let us pass when we should have fell. He gave us an A when we should have took the L. So now I hail him as the ultimate F, father of the universe, he who gives all tests. See, God is a paradox. He's the music that composes musicians. He's the music that constructs the auditorium with such acoustic precision. God is the manifestation of mystery, a coherent conundrum, a sound puzzle where the piece is complete. God is indescribable, inexplainable, incomprehensible, inexplicable. God is the day that we all pass when we should have failed. He said that God could fix this, that he would save me, yet he didn't hear my cry. Where was my saving grace when I truly needed? Where were you when I was bleeding, or tripping, or dying? Where is your love? God 
one is the hope that is internally felt, yet externally unseen. God is love, which is the source and center of our being. God is the conviction of joy, overpowering the deepest of sorrows. God is the opposite of suicide, bringing us to see the hope of tomorrow. Then, as a tainted environment I had once called safe deteriorated, he swept me up and held me in his everlasting arms, cradled by the one thing, drugs, or alcohol, or cutting, or death, could it suffice? Love. So who is this God that loves us? Knowing that he could have saved his son and his son could have saved himself, but didn't. To look into the eyes of his creation, knowing that we'd be the origin of betrayal. Yet he still proceeded to speak breath into us. He loved us more than the hurt that we were capable of causing. A God that loved us more than our lifetime of sin. Who is this God? 